Bow. What's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean and I have a networking tip. A tip that every single artist should know. So many artists are not using this and losing out on an advantage they could have. Managers, producers, they need to use this as well. They're missing out, but it's usually a few more managers and PR type people who are already in on it. But you need to know this artist. But before I get into this, I want to mention that this clip that I'm about to show you guys is a clip directly from my master music networking guide that I dropped about a year ago now. So if you already have the guide, you've been had access to this, so you don't necessarily need to watch the clip unless you want to for a refresher. But what I would love you to do is put a review of your experience with the guide, maybe how you've used it or just what you think of the guide in the comment section below. And anybody else, you can check deeper into the guide at the link in the description, mastermusicnetworking.com. So to hop right into the content of this video, we're talking about LinkedIn. Now, if you don't know what LinkedIn, it's a professional business networking site. It's like Instagram, except for business people, more serious stuff, but it's not just Instagram, it's how you use it. So go ahead and check this video out to see why I say it's so powerful for artists and people in the music industry in general when it comes to networking. What's up? It's Brand Man, and I want to do a quick LinkedIn walkthrough, especially if you're a beginner. But I'm going to jump into some advanced things and just some things that are going to help you get some bigger connections and quicker connections on the site after explaining how it works. Now, one, I created this dummy profile right here because there's going to be some people who have not had a LinkedIn profile before, and even people who have limited you LinkedIn connections can utilize the first thing I'm going to talk about. So first, really understanding the platform and how it works. I created this dummy profile again, meaning it started with zero connections and actually it only has one connection if you look at this number right here and I'll get into that later. So this is a quick example of how LinkedIn works. I'm going to type in Apple, the company. I could just type people in Apple, um, but see all employees at Apple on LinkedIn. So you're going to see Joseph. Where we go, Michelina Wildcat. You might not see these names particularly, but you see these numbers second, third, you're seeing these numbers. What does that mean? Second means this person is two degrees of separation away from you. That means you know somebody who knows this person. Third, like Michelina Walcott, that means you know somebody who knows somebody who knows this person. That's why LinkedIn is very powerful in the business world because it helps you get to people um, a lot quicker or gives you an idea of the network that you don't even know you might not be aware of. Now, once again, I started with zero connections, which means I couldn't see anybody's profile because LinkedIn only allows you to see profiles that you have connections with or people who make their stuff super public, which very, very few people do. Check this out where you see LinkedIn member, LinkedIn member. This means I can't see this person's profile. That's what a lot of you guys would see right off the bat. Profiles out of your network have limited vis visibility. That means I can't see it. I'm not able to see it. Or if I was paying, you were paying for like a premium account, it would allow you to see these profiles, but I'm going to give you guys the free option. Once again, I mentioned I had one connection. Who is that one connection? That connection is Sean Taylor, the real Sean Taylor. Once again, this profile is only connected to my profile, no other connections. And because it's connected to the real Sean Taylor, this dummy Sean Taylor account can now see people who work at a lot of different and random companies. Uh, let me just think of a company, Atlantic Records, right? Go to Atlantic Records and now you start to see these names, third connection, third connections, which means I know somebody who knows this person. I know somebody who knows this person. Well, that means Sean Taylor, the real Sean Taylor knows somebody who knows this person. But this account right here, this dummy account, knows Sean Taylor, who knows somebody who knows this person. That's the, the three connections away, right? You'll be able to see and get connections to a lot of different accounts just from following me. So everybody do that because it'll be helpful for you guys, whether you just started and you only need at least that one connection to start off with, or you have an account already, but you haven't really been utilizing it. And another thing, so everybody, if you haven't had certain connections or I don't have connections on with certain people that you might want to get in contact with, start connecting with them yourself. 
And one of the best ways is to connect, add a little note, maybe say something like, I saw you do this for a living. Uh, just wanted to be able to ask you a quick question. Maybe ask them a quick question, just like the format I talked about for advice and things like that. In the networking guide, that same little format works, right? So connect, it's on its way, add a note. Add a note with your connection request and maybe ask a quick question, do that, done. It'll be a lot less random because when people get random connection requests, sometimes they don't wanna answer. Now, another thing to mention is this. If you are an artist, I do not advise you to put your artist on your LinkedIn profile. Create some other name terminology for what you do or what you're trying to do. Maybe just make it a fake profile. You know, it has your picture and all that stuff, but maybe call yourself maybe some kind of marketing strategist or a promotional intern or even just give yourself a regular nine to five job and then always approach the people that you're trying to connect with more from a learning perspective. And when you reach out to them for connections on this platform, do it from a more professional advice or learning the business type of information tip as opposed to telling them you're an artist. And when you reach out to them as an artist, do not reach out to them on LinkedIn. So even if you're connected with them on LinkedIn, do not reach out to them as an artist on LinkedIn if they accept your request. Why? I mentioned this in the networking guide, but people are on here for professional things and they do not like seeing artist solicitations on LinkedIn. They get them all day on all the other websites, but on LinkedIn, they just want it to be business. So do not take advantage of that and the fact that you can find these people on here. I showed you a route where you can get their emails and then obviously the other ways where you can get to them on social media. Just use this to find people what they do, maybe start to see connections to them, right? So if I clicked on Chris Jones, I even mentioned that a lot of other people and connections will be on the side. You see people who view Chris Jones' profile also looked at Liar Cohen. They also looked at Quinn Coleman and all these other people. So that's going to be something that helps you out because it's going to start to let you know these other people in these other industries that might be worth talking to, not necessarily other industries, but other positions, whether it's at the same company or other companies, because you'll start to get a vibe of who knows who. Look at Latoya Lee. Latoya Lee, um, third connections, that means I know somebody, me personally, not this dummy profile that knows her. Um, and, and oh snap, look at this. <laughs> that boy Kendrick got a LinkedIn profile. Who knew? What's up, Kendrick? But I guess it's because he's also a business person. Obviously, it's not decked out profile like a lot of other people. Pharrell, Lil Wayne, nah. <laughs> See, these people, <laughs> there's no way, man, that they got their own uh, LinkedIn profiles that they actively use, but it's interesting. So look, Richard Rose, Rick Ross, that means I know somebody who's friends with Rick Ross, which I actually didn't know, which is again, one of those benefits of using LinkedIn because you start to be able to see people that you know, that know other people and get that vibe of it really quickly. So after I finish this, I'm probably gonna go back to my regular profile to see who I know that knows him. Just for kicks, because I don't necessarily have a reason I wanna even get connected with him right now, but that's dope though. And oh, and really quickly, I wanna say for those of you who might be like, hey, Kendrick Lamar has a recording artist profile. Well, that's completely different. He's Kendrick Lamar at this point. You can have a real account profile as yourself as an artist, but I'm just, I'm letting you know, You'll be easier when it comes to getting in contact with certain people if you create your dummy account also that's a little bit more professional and just looks like a business person because a lot of people probably won't want to connect with you just because they see that you're an artist. It just is what it is, particularly on this platform. Obviously, Kendrick Lamar is at the point that Kendrick Lamar is. UPR professionals, entertainment lawyers, managers, all of y'all are going to be straight because that's just professional to professional as they will see it. All right, so a final thing that I want to go through that's incredible incredibly powerful and it's one of the great benefits of LinkedIn is the filtering. The filtering is so great. So what I mean by that is how you can find people and search people. Atlantic Records, right? I'm going to go see all employees. We'll just stick with Atlantic Records because we've done it already. Now you see all these people on the side, but let's look at this filter options right here. Locations. How about Los Angeles? Who works at Atlantic Records and they're in Los Angeles. These people pop up, right? Cool. Now, if I say, let's do New York, 
let's get rid of the people in Los Angeles or we can do both, but these are the people there in New York. Now, as you can see, I don't have the profile connections with a lot of these people, but once you start to build out, it'll make it easier to search people in certain locations. Another thing is obviously you can see people by the connections. So who do I have a first connection with at this company? Nobody, because once again, I'm only connected with the real Sean Taylor account. Might have some second connections, might have some third plus connections, but those are some really cool ways and things you can do when you're talking about the filtering. Obviously, as I mentioned before, you can do stuff like just type in a position at any place and just be like a and r and then you'll see a whole bunch of a and r's that pop up on the website but that's something you guys can explore and get deeper into when it gets to the keywords and all these different types of things there are different ways to filter obviously other industries and companies non basics all that kind of stuff there's a lot of things that you can learn from um, LinkedIn. Some of these things when it comes to the skills they're a little less relevant because everybody isn't diligent about getting other people to support them and update this. I know I'm very bad at this and I don't keep my LinkedIn profile super up to date on all the things that I actually do, but this is a good starter place in terms of at least connecting with people. So this is the walkthrough. I'm going to do one more video on when I talked about capturing emails in a networking guide, just so you can see what that looks like. Let's get it. All right, so that's it for this particular video, and I hope it's something that you try for yourself. It's an extra powerful tool. You can get a lot of gains out of it. And as mentioned in the video, I actually do go deeper into LinkedIn within the guy, like how you can actually get people's direct emails using the site. But even bigger than that, this is just one section of the Master Music Networking Guide. I would like to make that clear. As a matter of fact, this is actually one subsection within six sections in the Master Music Networking Guide. So if you're really interested in becoming a more powerful networker, not within just music, honestly, but being able to utilize and get sponsorships outside of music and relationships outside of music, this is extremely powerful for anybody. And especially indie artists, your networking ability is going to be one of the biggest things that determines your career trajectory. I'm not talking about just fan base building and all that great stuff, but the actual business side that's gonna give other opportunities and give you some money, honestly. And as always, I would love to know what you guys think in general about this video here. And as I said, if you happen to have the Master Music Networking Guide, I would love to know how you utilized it or just your experience with it. Put it in the comment section below. Other than that, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like it, might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe.